Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's December 14th. One day closer to the weekend. I know, and closer to Christmas. <laughs> yes, it is 11 days. Can you believe it? And we're all thinking about next week and taking care of all of our business, getting all our gifts bought, grocery laid in, all that stuff. Everything. A lot of errands to do. So how will it look when we're running all of our errands, Justin? Well, it depends on when you do them. Uh, you probably do need to get them na done now, though, now that I think about it. Uh, it is going to be a little damp uh, next couple days. Good news here if you're, you're a procrastinator like myself and you're waiting till the weekend. The weekend looks good. Uh, let's look at the radar right now. We've got some showers out there. Generally light stuff. Uh, and we'll see these passing light showers from time to time today. Not a big deal. These are not the kind of showers that will fill up the rain gauge. You're going to see nothing more than uh, maybe a few sprinkles. A lot of clouds today, though, and uh, it's conceivable we can see a little bit of sun during the afternoon, but not much. 57 degrees noontime. We'll make it up to around 62 today. Uh, there is that small, small chance of a shower. East Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then as we head into tonight, clouds will thicken up. And we'll start tomorrow off probably with a little bit of drizzle and maybe some fog, too. As you look outside, uh, this is pretty cool. A cloud feature. You can kind of look in the distance here. It's what we call undulating clouds. They, they kind of look like a, like a wave moving through the sky there. Pretty cool stuff created by some turbulence there in the, in the atmosphere. Uh, but as we look at the weather headlines, a few showers again today and tomorrow. Then uh, we're trending drier tomorrow. This is sort of the unfortunate part of this forecast is uh, we're just not looking as at as much rain as we had hoped with the system coming through tomorrow. But the, the trade off here, uh, some good weather this weekend and some good travel weather. We're going to look at that for you. I know a lot of people are hitting the roads, uh, maybe flying out next week. We'll look at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But speaking of roads, mm -hmm. let's check in with RJ. How are things looking locally? All right, Justin. Yeah, uh, it's been a busy morning. Uh, got a lot of uh, major crashes cleared out throughout the our eight o'clock hours. So that's good news, especially up there in Castle Hills, Balcones Heights. That was a kind of a mess out there. But what you're looking at right now is a US 90. These are the westbound lanes at General McMullen. So this was initially being reported as a stall. Uh, just talked to Transguide right now and they said that there was uh, debris on the road. So nothing major at the moment, but you could see we do have traffic uh, slowed down here in this uh, in this area on the near west side. You can see from our maps, again, you're showing that delay there. You see the red here, so we're causing something all the way back up to Southwest 36th Street. Uh, so something to keep in mind if you're traveling into uh, San Antonio, into downtown from Highway 90. Something to uh, definitely uh, keep track of. All right, we're going to go north of downtown now. Uh, a little bit north of uh, kind of there around the San Antonio Zoo area, southbound US 281 at Hildebrand. Uh, seeing uh, traffic being affected northbound and southbound, we have a stalled vehicle there on the southbound lanes, but uh, something that uh, doesn't appear to be too major at the moment. Rest of the city, things looking pretty good right now. As we take a look at our citywide map, you see a lot of green here, just kind of our normal busy spots where we usually see a pretty good amount of traffic right now. Again, a lot of people going to be heading out, uh, maybe doing some holiday shopping right now, kind of getting out a little bit earlier to some of our busy areas, the Forum, the Rim, those kind of uh, shopping areas that a lot of people go to. So make sure you stay safe and be cautious on the roads. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. House Republicans have voted to authorize an impeachment investigation into President Biden. Republicans argue it will further their audit, which has yet to uncover any evidence of presidential wrongdoing. The vote came hours after the president's son, Hunter Biden, defended his father and himself from Republican attacks outside the U.S. Capitol. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is meeting with Israeli officials this week, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli President Isaac Herzog. The White House says Sullivan will stress to Israel that it needs to be more, quote, surgical and reduce civilian harm with his military campaign against Hamas. Meanwhile, calls for an end to the war are increasing in the U.S. The Federal Reserve is done hiking interest rates, at least for now. The nation's central bank keeping its key rate unchanged for the third time in a row. Fed officials also signaling they foresee rate cuts next year as early as next summer. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says inflation is steadily edging down to the 2% target and employment and layoffs are staying low. Tesla is recalling almost every vehicle it's sold in the U.S., more than 2 million of them. 
The automaker has to fix a system that ensures drivers pay attention when autopilot is on. The recall follows a two-year investigation by U.S. regulators into crashes happening while autopilot was in use. Some of those accidents were deadly. But experts say the recall won't fix the system's basic inability to stop for every obstacle in its way. New credit card data from Barclays shows people spent less on luxury goods last month. High-end fashion retailers like Bergdorf Goodman and others are entering the holiday shopping season with too much inventory. That's raising concern about a discounting dive that would tarnish the image of those luxury merchants. The FCC is proposing new restrictions on fees imposed on subscribers who want to change service providers. The proposal would also allow partial refunds for subscribers who cancel mid-month. It's part of a President Biden's executive order from 2021 that directs the federal government to find ways to boost competition. The FCC will now open it up to the public feedback before taking a final vote. The tide may be turning for renters as rent prices are beginning to decline across the country. According to Redfin, the median rent rate declined 2.1% in November from the year before. That's the biggest annual drop since February 2020. The company says renters can thank the surge in construction of apartment buildings for the decline. Amazon has added a feature to help you look through your entire online library. The new Your Books hub puts all of your digital, physical, and audiobooks into one searchable area. The feature will also provide recommendations for new items based on past purchases. Apple is now selling the case for its latest AirPod Pros separately. It's for anyone who wants to make the switch to the USB-C case without purchasing a whole new set of second-gen AirPod Pros. The case by itself is selling for $99. And that's today's 9 at 9. Well, in your other morning headlines, a suspension for Golden State Warriors is Draymond Green, but we don't know if or when he will be back. And ChatGPT is not getting students to cheat any more than normal. Plus, Amazon is spreading Christmas cheer to their delivery drivers, and you can help and cruising on a ship till the end of 2028. Can you believe it? Well, David Sears is here to explain all of your morning headlines. That's a long time at sea. No, thank you. But back to the chat GTP thing. Doesn't it sound weird when you say not cheating any more than normal? Like, really? How much are we cheating these days? Just a little bit. We'll tell you. Just, yeah, we got some answers to that question, too. All right, but first, let's start with this question for the NBA today. How long is indefinitely? If you're a Spurs fan or just an NBA fan, you know all too well this guy loses it on the court. We're talking about Draymond Green. And Draymond Green did it again, swung around and nailed the Suns' Yusuf Nurkic right across the face. The NBA suspended him indefinitely. The second time he's been suspended this season, and we are only a quarter of the way through. He has already missed five games for putting a Minnesota Timberwolf in a headlock earlier this year. He tried to apologize, but for a guy who's now been suspended 18 times in his career, oh, the apology a little too late. Grabbing me and pulling my hip back. So I spun away, and unfortunately, I hit him. And so, like I said, I apologize to Yusef. What's going on with him? I don't know. Personally, I feel like that brother needed help. You know, I'm glad he not tried to choke me. Hope he, you know, whatever he got in his life will get better. All right, so the NBA says he, quote, will be required to meet certain league and team conditions before he returns to play. By the way, more on the Spurs lost or near victory last night against L.A. RJ and I will be coming up with that in just a few minutes. All right, most of you parents and school-aged kids probably fully aware of ChatGPT, another AI invention. This one used to generate answers and essays when prompted by a student. So naturally, a lot of folks just figure there's going to be some serious cheating going on with this thing. You can rest easy, though. No more cheating than normal, whatever that is. That's according to a study from researchers at Stanford University. They compared cheating with ChatGPT and years before ChatGTP came along. They did an anonymous survey at 40 high schools across the country. They discovered that 60 to 70 percent of students actually admitted they cheated in the last month. The number is the same or even before. It's less before GTP came along. However, public schools across the country have banned students and teachers from using chat on school networks and devices. All right, here's some Christmas cheer for you. If you have a package delivered by Amazon, Merry Christmas to the driver. This year, Amazon's going to tip delivery drivers five bucks for every thank you that you send. So tell Alexa or go to 
thank my driver on Amazon's website of mobile shopping app. The driver who dropped off your last package will be notified that you appreciated their work, and then they will give get five bucks from Amazon. The tip is coming from Amazon, so it's not coming to you. You don't have to pay it. So Amazon has $2 million worth of thank yous. They are ready to hand out. So Merry Christmas to the Amazon drivers. Hey, if you want to uh, store all your stuff or sell it and then spend three and a half years on a ship via Vi residence and a ship called Odyssey, that's it right there. That could be your next home. It was built back in 1993, enlarged in 09, renovated in 19, and it can carry 924 passengers, has 485 cabins, eight decks, wraparound promenade, enlarged pool, three restaurants, eight bars, four lounges, a spa, fitness center, library, and medical center, everything you're gonna need for three and a half years. Its flatter hull means it can actually navigate inland waterways as well as the open ocean. Eight decks, wraparound promenade, we've already said all that, got all that stuff on it. And there's some particulars about this thing. Uh, let's see, it's 1,301 1, days across 147 countries and 425 ports. Port stays could be two to seven days. It'll cost you $97,455 for an inside cabin. Remember, that's three and a half years. You can actually just cruise in segments, though. If you only want to go 35 days or 120 days, you can do that. Food, soft drinks are free. Dinner comes with one drink. It sets sail next May. Some people have done the math, and it's cheaper than paying rent in a large city or may even beat a mortgage by the time it's all said and done. But I th thought about if you go to, like, one of these ports and you want to buy some stuff, mm -hmm. where do you put it? <laughs> you're, in a, question. you're in a dinky well, little little uh, little cabin and if they go well, all around the world right you're going oh. to colder climates and warmer climates right because that picture that they had right there there's like uh there's like mountains right there there was snow yep. snow on the mountains you so, gotta pack everything so how but if you got one of them little dinky cabins you get in the inside of the ship what well, do you do well at least dave these people get to go there was another one yeah. that was set to leave re uh, uh, yeah, recently they, they, and the company's like oh we don't have a ship and they had to cancel so they're probably going to get sued well yeah they're yeah. they're 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 going under so to speak yeah they are. <laughs> david thank you see you in a bit 9 10 52 degrees still ahead on gmsa at nine this month's educator of the month spotlights two saisd bus employees who had to jump into action. What? Oh my God. Go grab her. Little socks were soaking wet. She was just shivering. I got to meet these incredible women who helped save a toddler's life, and they're now being honored for it. And after all the gifts are given, you may need to go back to the store to make returns or exchanges when we come back. What you need to know about changes to some stores' policies. Many of us are in holiday shopping mode, but after the holidays comes the hassle of returns. And sometimes you may give or get a gift that you just can't use, and retailers know that. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore says many stores have changed their return policies. Ever received a gift that's just not a fit? An ugly sweater. Probably an ugly, ugly purse that I had to return and try to exchange without the person knowing that I'm exchanging it. It is the thought that counts, but 40% of people say they'll probably return at least one gift this holiday. We try not to return things, but it's impossible, especially with all of the online ordering. To save the hassle, it helps to check the return policy before you buy. Every retailer has their own policy, but many extend the window through the end of January, effectively giving recipients a month to return or exchange once they've gotten their gift. Walmart is allowing most purchases made between October 1st and December 31st to be returned until January 31st. At Target, you have through January 24th to return most electronics and entertainment items. Items. Apple is an exception. And at Best Buy, make returns by January 13th. Holiday gifts you buy from Amazon will need to be returned by January 31st. But beware, third-party sellers may not be as return-friendly. If you're not sure you'll keep a gift, don't remove tags or rip the box. You might incur a restocking fee, which could be up to 15% of what you paid, if the packaging isn't intact. That's especially common for electronics. 
and save those gift receipts. But even if you don't have one, you can still ask for a refund or store credit. And gift cards are popular, but every year millions of dollars in gift cards goes unused. So if you get one you're just not going to use, you can donate it to charity. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We want to take you to the scene of some late breaking news right now. We want to show you the location in the 1000 block of West Wesatch Avenue. That's near Grant Avenue. And you're now looking live at the scene. This is a report of a shooting. That's right. We have a photojournalist, Asian Bermia, on the scene who is uh, give, giving us uh, this picture right now. It looks like we still have investigators on the scene kind of uh, looking at the ground right now. Number of evidence markers there, uh, right there by those steps of that that home and obviously crime scene tape. It looks like investigators are also on the second floor and some sort of object at the top of those steps. But as you said, Steph, uh, AZ and it out there. And as soon as we get more information on what's happening out at this uh, location on West Wesatch, north of downtown, we'll let you know. And let's look out there with live cam, kind of waiting for the sun after that rainy day we had yesterday, Justin. Yesterday was uh, very damp and kind of wet all day. We, we've seen a couple showers today. We're not going to see as much rain as we did yesterday. And in fact, I do think we could see a little bit of sun this afternoon. And if you're really hoping for some sun this weekend, this weekend looks great. We're going to get some really good weather. So let's go back outside for you and look at the temperatures here in San Antonio. Still pretty cool. Still jacket weather. 52 at the airport, 54 New Braunfels. You still got 40s in places like Bernie and Kerrville with a little bit of a wind, so it makes it feel just a little bit cooler out there with the wind chill. So, uh, the Authority radar showing us a couple of showers here and there. These are light showers, nothing more than a few sprinkles. Uh, we'll see a couple of these moving through today, but don't expect a lot of activity on the radar. We're going to call for about a 20% chance of rain. Hit or miss shower. Again, a lot of cloud cover with maybe a few breaks this afternoon. Here's the bigger picture, and the heavier rain is up north. Some good rain across the Texas Panhandle, place that needs the rain too, but it'd be nice if we could share some of that down here. We've got a few more showers south towards the valley, and I'll show you that we've got some good snow on the back side of this system. Heavy snow, in fact, in the mountains of Colorado and northeastern New Mexico. That's where they could see one to five inches of snow out of this storm system. There are winter storm warnings in effect there. Some of the ski resorts getting some good snow out of this. Uh, as far as rainfall goes, well, there's that heavy rain we were talking about in the Texas Panhandle. They could see up to two inches before it's all said and done. But look what happens down here. As it often is and has it, it's felt like it's been this way for the last two or three years. We are on the tail end of this storm system, so we don't get near as much. And in fact, it's trending drier now as we head into tomorrow. I still think we'll get some showers, but we're talking a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch at best. If you remember a few days ago, we were talking higher totals. That's when the storm system was taking more of a southerly track. Now it's trending north and takes the rain away from us. Not ideal. Uh, but that's just the situation we're in. 57 noontime, 20% chance of rain. There's those uh, few peaks of sun we were talking about. 62 by 4 o'clock, that's our high temperature, 61 at 5 p.m. And then dipping back down into the 50s tonight. Now the clouds will thicken up as we head into this evening and the overnight hours. And we may start to see some drizzle, uh, some of that stuff uh, coming back Friday morning for at least a, a brief period. Here's a look at our forecast here, and this does show around 5 o'clock. A lot of the shower activity is probably out to the west of San Antonio with some breaks in the clouds as you go east of town. And then as we get into tomorrow morning, a few more showers here around San Antonio. Here comes our front, the storm system, and notice it's just kind of scattered light rain. I we thought maybe we'd get some thunderstorms out of this too and it, we can't rule out a rumble of thunder but more of the dynamics the better dynamics are off to our north where they could see some thunderstorms i just don't think we're going to see a lot here and then by 7 p.m a lot of this is starting to clear out and this leads to a great weekend the only thing you're going to have to worry about on saturday are gusty winds on the back side of this we could get some gusts up to 30 miles per hour out of the north on saturday we'll see what that does to mountain cedar uh, but it will be nice as far as uh, the sun beat out and temperatures are concerned. Uh, you know, we do need the rain. I showed this a few days ago, but I think it's worth showing again. It's been 32 days since we've had half an inch or more at the airport, 44 days since we've had an inch or more, and it's been 213 days since we've had two inches or more 
uh, with a rainfall and you got to go back to May for that. So we are in desperate need of just a good soaking rain. Again, I don't foresee that happening with this storm system. And the other bit of good news here is after it passes, uh, once we get into the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, it's all good travel weather across the state. If you're hitting the roads or even uh, going to the airport, I don't anticipate big delays, at least here across the state, as the weather really clears out next week, and it should be pretty nice. Uh, so there's a look at the forecast. We've lowered rain chances tomorrow to 40%. Uh, that front goes through, and then 63 Saturday, 68 and sunny on Sunday. Oh, wow. Well, good for traveling, but maybe not Christmassy weather. Not Christmassy, but good for travel. And that'll take away some of the, head the headaches that uh, people may be going through this time of year. Very true. Thank yeah. you, Justin. At 921, 52 degrees. And December graduations are happening. And we are featuring a few great graduates from UTSA. When we come back, our Tiffany Huertas will tell us about a young man who turned to education to help him overcome adversity in his life. December graduation took place this past weekend for UTSA and this morning we're sharing the incredible journey of a man who moved from Honduras with a passion for education. Tiffany Huertas shares his experience and how his family and professors helped him reach his educational goals. Emerson Larios was born in Honduras. I was like with my family until I was like six years old and I well, I was in an orphanage from like 8 to like 14. While at an orphanage, Lario says he focused on study, diving deep into biology and math. And like when I got to the orphanage, I was basically given opportunities to study and I think that that became a refuge for me, uh, academia and learning and it became a way in which to cope with the adversity. His hard work paid off. In 2007, Larios was awarded an academic scholarship to attend a school in Auburn, Alabama. His host family changed his life forever. They have supported me throughout uh, all my academic endeavors. So. Larios loves education. He earned a bachelor's degree in science and minor in chemistry at the University of Mobile and a master's in biology at Auburn University and most recently crossed the stage at UTSA and received his second master's in psychology. My love for learning, for uh, scholar-like work and research has grown, and the opportunities that are here are big, so I hope that I develop skills to get those opportunities. Larios is continuing his education. He is working on a doctoral degree in psychology. One of main, but what the main focus in our la research lab is sleep and then how how can sleep affect stress development and then subsequent like, trauma, like uh, stress disorders and so um, So that's really like, I want to do research in that area. Like where does biology and psychology come into play and how that works. Larios is grateful for everyone who supported him in his journey. I am definitely very proud of myself. For other students chasing their dreams, Larios has a message. And I would say just take a breath. Uh, like it, it's, you're gonna face difficulties, but it's like centering yourself and centering the people that support you. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And his journey continues. Right now it's 927, 52 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at nine. Including the heroic actions of a school bus driver and bus monitor who helped save a little girl's life. Hey, this is Dawn. Um, there is a little baby girl about two or three years old just wandering the street. I don't see a parent. These two SAISD employees who jumped into action are receiving KSET's Educator of the Month Award. And I'm going to share their story coming up after the break. Plus, David and RJ will be back to talk about the first game of back-to-backs with the Lakers. And also a look at the SEC schedule that was just released and the big matchups for both UT and A&M. Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. Every month during the school year here at KSET, we have been recognizing our area educators for going above and beyond. And this last recognition of the year is a special one. In fact, we are honoring two educators for the month of December. Both are employees with SAISD's Transportation Department, and both jumped into action on one cold morning, saving a toddler's life. It was a cold morning in November of last year. Look! What? Oh my God. Go grab her. Bus driver Don Hepworth and bus monitor Brenda Huckle came across a toddler in the middle of the street. Hey, this is Don. 
Um, there is a little baby girl about two or three years old just wandering the street. I don't see a parent. SCISD bus monitor Brenda Huckle tells us she remembers jumping off the bus running to the toddler. Her little socks were soaking wet. She was just shivering. She's been out here for a while. She's cold. SAISD bus driver Don Hepworth says she couldn't believe the baby girl was out wandering in the cold. And I gave her my coat and told her to put the baby's feet in the arms of my jacket to warm her feet up because they were like ice. Don and Brenda are both being honored with the Educator of the Month Award. Congratulations. This is Thank for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We have a trophy on its way. And, and we also dollar. caught up with the bus driver, Don. Oh, wow. Thank <laughs> you. What? It was a serious situation last year. I mean, it was 36 degrees, and we had morning dew. Her feet were soaked, and I I wasn't even supposed to turn down that street. I was actually supposed to go to the light and then take a right. But God sent me down that street because she was out there. Thank God she was not injured because it could have came out with 35 access road real close. She could have wondered out there. As for the toddler, SAISD officials tell us that she was reunited with her family, who was staying at that hotel close to where she was found. An amazing team. Do we know how or why the toddler wandered off? So there's a hotel, You can. it's hard to see on the video. Uh, it's, it's right an, to the it's left. An, it's an Econo Lodge, yeah. and, and that's where the, the toddler wandered out the door uh, and ended up on, on the street. Wow. And uh, it's, an, it's an amazing story just because uh, that's not their normal bus route. Right, She had taken right. a wrong turn, and that's very close to 35. Oh, it's, it's extraordinarily yes. close. Mm -hmm. And with the district's help, you had to track down this this one uh, person yes. that was out of state, right? Yes, yes, you could see that our um, our interview with the mm -hmm. bus driver, uh, that's on Zoom because she's out of state right now, but we were able to, uh, you know, award them both and talk to them both. I'm glad we were able to tell their story. Thank you, Mark, me too, thank you. And it was a great story, so we congratulate you so much, uh, you know, for doing what you do. We were uh, kind of pulled at our heartstrings, you know, watching this video, especially with, you know, with the toddler there. But we're glad the toddler is safe. And if you'd like to nominate an educator, it could be anybody, you know, it could be a teacher, you know, a bus driver, just like we featured right now. And just a reminder that you can go to our website at kset.com slash educator. Back outside with live cam. 53 degrees, making some progress, and if you miss it, right off the top of the newscast, Justin was talking about what looks like kind of wavy clouds. Yeah, we call them undulating clouds, and you can kind of see those sometimes when there's some turbulence in the atmosphere. We're seeing a little bit of that as you look out there on live cam. Pretty cool stuff. We've also noticed a couple drops there on live cam, so we know we've got a few more showers out there. Honestly, not a lot here on San Antonio. We're going to keep rain chances in the low end today, but they're still there. Uh, as you get down I-35 towards Laredo, you do run into better rain chances. You can see that stretching from the valley up to Laredo and up towards the uh, Del Rio area and then up into North Texas. Pollen count is in. Mountain Cedars moderate today at 410. I think we're all feeling it. Molds are low at 370. Uh, we'll talk about the Mountain Cedar forecast. We do have some gusty winds on the way this weekend that could play a role in bringing Mountain Cedar up. Our forecast today, noontime, 57, 20% chance of rain. We do taper those rain chances off. I think we'll see less and less in the radar as we head towards the afternoon. 62 is our forecast high. Now, rain chances begin to pick up again tomorrow as a frontal boundary works through. Some showers uh, throughout the day before we clear out over the weekend. So we'll take another look at that weekend forecast and uh, talk rainfall totals too. Coming up in just a couple minutes. Justin, thank you. Uh, back to that late breaking news right now. We are tracking a shooting on the near north side. This is happening at West Wesatch near Grant, just north of downtown and east of I-10. And we've got some new information into our newsroom. That's right. The information we have right now is that the it was a landlord and tenant dispute and that the landlord and tenant pointed guns at each other. And right now we are hearing that the landlord shot the tenant in the head and died at the hospital. This is all directly from SAPD. They also say homicide detectives are on the scene, and I think that's what we've been seeing out here since we started showing you these uh, live images. That appears to be a detective right there. So again, ongoing shooting investigation. This is a deadly shooting, uh, but it appears the uh, scene is calm right now. And again, we've not heard anything about uh, potential charges um, in this incident. We'll keep you posted. 
Well, on to other news and on a much lighter note, we are obviously now weeks away from ringing in a new year. And if you want to end 2023 on a positive financial note, there are a few money moves to consider before the year ends. CNN's Jen Sullivan has five tips that could help set you up for financial success in 2024. Before you say farewell to 2023, you may want to reflect on your spending and plan for the future. You want to be able to have your ducks in a row. You want to have your finances organized. Here are five money moves from financial experts to consider these final days of the year if improving your finances is one of your 2024 resolutions. One, look ahead and decide which big purchases you'd like to make next year. Then create a plan to afford that new house, car, or trip. With the Fed expected to cut interest rates next year, economists say you could land lower interest rates by mid-2024. My sense is, is that interest rates have already come down and we we expect them to fall further when we're talking about a 30-year mortgage or a five-year fixed rate on the purchase of an automobile. Two, tackle any lingering debt. Either pay it off now to avoid dragging it into next year or come up with a plan to pay it off next year. Three, boost your emergency savings fund. Figure out the most scaled back amount you need in order to get by month to month. Four, look back at the year and take inventory of your assets and liabilities. The cash that you have, your investment accounts, your properties, have a list of all of those assets and then have a list of the liabilities. If you owe on a car, if you know how much you owe on your mortgage, if you have any credit card debt. And five, plan to invest. Decide how much you'll invest next year and in what. You really want to try your best to still continue to put money into your account, whether it be your 401k, your Roth IRA, or any sort of retirement vehicles. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. All right, let's talk about San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> Can't snap their franchise record losing streak. Not yeah, yet. Not, not yet. yet. 18 losses in a row for the Silver Black and another defeat to the Lakers. But it was close. David and RJ are back to break it down. What did one of you call mm. it? A near victory? Yeah. A near wow. victory. That's what we said. Moral victories. Yeah. Jesus. Hey, got to count. Got to look for the positive somewhere. Uh, yeah, gutsy yeah. loss. Some silver lining. Gutsy. I mean, they Some black and silver lining. Let me let me ask you this. Let's set it up this way. Did they show a little bit of moxie last night? Yeah. They came from 20 down in the fourth quarter. Okay. They've That's done watching. that before yeah. in this stretch and lost, and they did it again. And and here's here's you want some other bad news? LeBron didn't play last night. <laughs> And Anthony not. Davis came out and had 15 in the first quarter and 24 in the first half. But the Spurs, I think uh, L.A. scored like the first bucket of the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. got up 20, and the Spurs came all the way back to cut it all the way down to two at one point. Okay. So, so I, here we go. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at some highlights yeah. now. Uh, ooh, nice, nice pass there. Nice transition dunk there, Jackson. Uh, oh, Christian Wood. Um, I, here's the thing. I, I will say this. Uh, if I'm looking at some black and silver linings here, <laughs> You mentioned Anthony Davis, David. Started off hot, 24 points, including I think this is going to be that dunk that he did on Wimby. Yeah. But, yeah, right but I will say Victor Wimbanyama did not back down from nope. Anthony Davis. An all-pro, all-star player, and Wimby went at him. And I like that. I like the fact that Wimby came after him. He didn't back right here, down from here, the here challenge we go. taking on AD. Yeah, take that. There you go. <laughs> nice. AD. Yeah. So Wimby had 30 points. Mm -hmm. 30 points. Yep. 13 rebounds and six Oof. block shots. Yeah. So he, that, if you want a silver lining, there you go. He's getting better and better, brother. They moved him to center, and it seems to be a little more comfortable in that position. Not that it matters a whole lot of times when, when you look at it. It's like, really? It's not like they're, you know, running yeah. you know, uh, three, high school plays for the center. It's right, like right. You know, uh, running up and down the floor. So. And, and the way I describe the Spurs right now, David, they feel like just a bunch of parts without that, a central that, right, nervous stop, stop, stop. That right there? <laughs> That was a killer. That was an absolute <laughs> mm -hmm. killer because they were down five with a minute left, and that ended up being down seven after that. L yep. And, yeah. and that's, that's the whole problem. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, I just No, no, yeah, yeah. I think we're kind out. of pointing that's, out the same thing. Right uh, you know, again, a lot, of, a lot of parts, no central sort of nervous system, no closer. But, again, I like the fact that, you know what, Victor Wimanyama, he took the last shot of the game. He took three to try and tie the game. Yeah. If we're going to lose, then we might as well go down with Victor Wimanyama yeah. taking the last shots of the game and being sort of the focal point. But he should not be, David. These other no. guys should be elevating him. I don't get this. He should not be 
their best player. He he is really good right now, very skilled. He should not be their best player. Right he got now. called for. He was he was trying to uh, kick out your leg, kick mm-hmm. the trick yeah. on the on the three. Yeah. He got called for an offensive foul, and that was that was the last foul of the night. So that did. But I give him give him credit for credit. And, and you're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. the other players are the older veterans, quote unquote, whatever that means these days. Yep. And they should be bringing him along. And he's having to now he's having to toe the line and. You know, he's still learning as he goes, but he's going to he's going to get a whole lot better. The problem is they still do not realize that every possession, especially when you're in their situation, counts. They can't just get lackadaisical and throw a ball across the court and expect it to all happen. And then there's Anthony Davis to steal. That was that was the turning point of the game last night on their run because they were coming on and coming on and and they were locking down the Lakers on, on defense. Yeah, they're I mean, Spurs well shutting them defense. down. Yeah, Flat out the shutting court. them down. Second half. And then you do that. A lot better so, the first half. Anyway. Tomorrow, David, uh, probably LeBron James will play again. The Lakers are in the second night of a back-to-back. They're still You know how you fix there. him? You know how you take so, care of that? Here we go. Turn the heat up in the Frost <laughs> Bank Center, baby. Oh my God. Welcome back, LeBron. Oh. The it's going to be 85 <laughs> degrees in there. Yeah. Well, it's unlike those finals. It's going to be uh, a little bit cooler here in San Antonio, but still. Well, you still turn up the heat. Heat, yeah. baby. Remember that About 85, 90 July degrees. Days. You have me limping around, cramping up. Sorry, LeBron. <laughs> All right, David. Uh, other big news here as we switch gears from the Spurs. Uh, the SEC, David, announced their their schedule yeah. for next season. Justin walked out. Where, where did he go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't uh, want to talk about Let's Texas. start with uh, we Oklahoma. got Texas. We yeah, got Texas. Texas Oklahoma are now. All right, so this, this is what's so good about the SEC. You still keep the rivalry Ooh. games for yeah. Texas, which and a and for great. This, this is going to be fun. October 12th, Oklahoma mm-hmm. and Texas in the Cotton Bowl, both now in the SEC. So that's that's a good rivalry game that they kept. Mm-hmm. Georgia, ooh. That's going to be a fun one. Florida ought to be a little bit better next year. Woo. Yeah. And then look at that one. Circle that one on your calendar. Mm, I'm November sure that 30th. Both fan bases have been circled. Man, oh, man. And they start. Yeah. In College Station. Yeah, that's tough. Of course. Yeah. This series. Got to. So. Got to. But, uh, but this right, is going to be every year. To, so. uh, Texas A&M, they are, yeah. they're scheduled here. Of course, they've been in the Yee. SEC for years now. Yee. They get LSU at home, at Auburn, at Florida, and, of course, the big one there, the Lone Star Showdown against UT there at College Station. It's going to be a lot of fun. I was really yeah. excited to see this schedule come out. Texas, Oklahoma now playing yeah. with the with the big dogs. And I, I that that uh, A&M Texas game that could very be, very well be one of the highest rated regular season football games in the history of college football. Why'd you walk away, Justin? Why'd you? Yeah, you go, <laughs> what? He's like, what? Any early Good thoughts, enough. predictions? Do you have your tickets yet for the Texas? <laughs> for next year? Uh, no, but I did see on on Twitter, or sorry, X, that uh, students were already lining yeah. up for wow. these tickets okay. at A&M. So it's a big deal. Best thing to happen with this whole change of conferences and stuff is that rivalry comes back. Should have never left, but it's back. So that's yeah, something to look forward to. And that's from a guy who went to Texas Tech. <laughs> but hey, as I always tell you, there's nothing better than watching those two teams beat the yes. fool out of each other. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Love it. It's a great game. No, it's, it should be. Should have never left. It's great. Thanks Absolutely. For the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Good to see that. We could go on and on and on, but we're oh, going to yeah. get in trouble if we keep going on and on and on. That is true. Go Spurs, go. Thank yeah. you, guys. 944, 53 degrees. You're watching GMSA at night. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We talked about the interesting clouds that were out there this morning. We started to get some pictures on KSAT Connect. This is one example here of the so-called wavy clouds here. We, uh, what we call undulating clouds. So they have sort of a wave-like nature to them. And it has to do with the winds and the atmosphere. But think of it like jumping in the ocean. You get the little ripples. Clouds can do that too, and that's kind of what we're dealing with here this morning, just based on the winds and the atmosphere. A technical term for this, aspiratus clouds. That's what we're seeing. It's pretty cool. Uh, we love all the pictures. Keep them coming to our KSAC Connect. Mountain Cedar forecast. It is moderate today around 410. Uh, but here's the problem for folks that uh, hate Mountain Cedar, which is all of us, right, at this point. Uh, it is going to probably get worse over the weekend. Saturday, we're expecting some gusts out of the north anywhere from 25 to 30 miles per hour. So that will push Mountain Cedar higher, likely. Again, I'm not an allergist, but that's usually how things work out. Uh, keep that in mind this weekend. Authority radar right now, some light showers tracking through, although we're seeing this uh, sort of go away. Uh, we're still going to get a sprinkle here and there, but certainly less coverage than we were looking at this morning. And I think as the afternoon or as the day wears on, 
Uh, most of the activity, if we're going to see, it's probably going to be out west. Don't know that we'll see a whole lot here around San Antonio. So not as wet as yesterday. 52, dew point is at 40. Air's just a little bit drier. Northeasterly winds at 5 miles per hour. And looking at the satellite picture, there are actually some breaks starting to take shape down there along I-35. We're also seeing some sun as you get out to our far eastern counties, places like Howitzville, seeing some peaks of sun. And I do think we could see some here in San Antonio today. You see some of those showers, though, that are continuing from Eagle Pass up towards Del Rio. And the bigger picture here, heavier rain stretches up into parts of uh, North Texas and the Texas Panhandle. And you can kind of see the weather pattern here. It's this moisture that's getting pulled up and north into our low that's spinning up here. And it's this low that's going to dive south. Well, not that far, unfortunately, more across North Texas. And that takes a lot of the energy and puts it here across North Texas. And we're kind of on, on the tail end of things. I mentioned, too, this brings snow with it. Good, heavy snow across parts of Colorado and New Mexico, even western Kansas this morning. And they'll see quite a bit of that there. Rainfall potential. Uh, good rain across the Texas Panhandle, not so much for us. We're kind of caught in between. Good rain there, good rain out in the Gulf of Mexico with another low that's developing, and we're caught in the middle where there's just not much. And this is sort of a change to the forecast. We had talked earlier about getting some, maybe some decent rainfall totals. It was looking good. And then the model started to push this thing a little bit further north, and this is what we end up with. A tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, that's the best and we can do with this. Uh, with the, the rainfall uh, tomorrow. 62 is our forecast high today. We'll probably still see some 50s in the hill country. And a quick check of the forecast. Uh, a few showers today, generally west of San Antonio. And then as we get into tomorrow, here comes that front. A few showers early, some drizzle early, and then by the afternoon, still a little bit of rain hanging on. Once this front passes through, though, we'll start to clear out by late on Friday. And I think uh, by Saturday morning, we are going to go clear, but it will be cool and Somewhat windy. There's your rain chances. 20% today, 40% tomorrow. Beyond that, nothing. 64 tomorrow with that 40% chance of rain. 63 Saturday, 68 Sunday. A beautiful weekend and beautiful weather next week as well. We'll be right back. Still kind of cloudy, but it's always a great day to go to the zoo at 5 till 10. Let's check out the uh, crane exhibit out there. And we see a few off on the other bank there at the water at the beautiful San Antonio Zoo. Yeah, it's nice out there. Not too bad, at least it's not raining right now. And don't forget, we are taking part in the Salvation Army's Parade of Kettles competition. We are trying to raise $2,000 for families in need this holiday season. And right now, we're about $900 away from meeting our goal. All right, if you grab your camera phone or phone on your camera on your phone. Scan this QR code. It'll <laughs> take you to our website where you can find a link to donate. This is uh, our team captain is one of our newest reporters, Daniela Ibata. She's been out at locations with the KSAT Red Kettle, so you may see her or another KSAT member around town. Every donation is appreciated, no matter how big or small. Even donating just $10 can help provide a meal for someone in need. Donations are being accepted through Christmas Eve. And just a note, I, I just scanned the QR code on the screen right now. It takes you to our article, so you have to scroll down, and it'll say you can donate to Team KSET by clicking on this link. So you got to scroll down the article. So it's kind of a two-step process, yeah. but you get it. <laughs> Thanks for any help. We appreciate it. Have a good Thursday.